So we're here today with Natalie from the Enfield Funeral Directors in Enfield Town, Greater London. And um, we've just recorded a really good five minutes, or they went to 12 minutes, careers interview about the different aspects of the role actually in a funeral directors. What I wanted to do now, Natalie, is to find out a little bit more about the different aspects of all the jobs. Because if we drive past the funeral directors, we automatically think of the people there dealing with the, uh, the customers, with the family, and we're thinking about people that are driving the, uh, the hearses and inevitably the, uh, the pallbearers and maybe the guy in the, or the lady in the front. So I do know there are different uh, aspects, like any business, that are behind the door that the public doesn't generally tend to see. So let's talk about those a little bit. So I know you're part of a small chain, three branch, three, three three branches. branches yeah. So do you have an accounts team in the business? We do. That's based in our Chesham branch. So how many people might you have there? Two or three people? Uh, there's two, three over in Chesham branch. Three people. Yeah. So uh, like most businesses, unless we outsource that particular mm. function, there will be mm. a small team somewhere yeah. doing invoicing, collecting the money, paying with suppliers, doing the payroll and so forth. Yeah, we actually do our own invoicing from here and then hand it over to Chesham. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's our responsibility to get the money in for the funerals from this shop. So in the uh, in a in a branch situation, for want of a better phrase, um, as we spoke earlier to Natasha and you, you're looking after the families and, and the and the client effectively who comes to the door. So a huge amount of responsibility. Very much so. We we want them obviously to like us to feel comfortable with us more than anything. Yeah. Um, and let them. We're, they're entrusting their loved ones with us. Yeah. So it's a huge responsibility for us. For them to feel comfortable with it. And, and let's be clear, there's quite an investment in a funeral, isn't it? I mean, what are we looking at today? Two and a half to six thousand pounds? Yes, yeah, quite yeah. easily. Depends on what type of funeral they want. Mm. We can't even do a funeral for a thousand pounds. But that would be no mornings, that would be no morning, which it does happen quite often now. A lot of families do choose to have that cheap funeral and have a celebration of life service afterwards because funerals are so expensive. And we do offer that service to families that want that choice. And you would. Um, do all the flower arrangements yourselves, or do you outsource that? We outsource that. So you go to a, a good florist, or yep, something you've got, florist we've got. Yeah, and you've got a relationship with them, and, yep. and you would steer yep. your customers, or you'd actually say, look, we'll deal with that for you. You don't yep. necessarily need them to go yep. to the, we've the, got the florist. Yeah, they can order it all, um, all go on their invoice, not a problem for them. And would you also be in a situation whereupon you could arrange the, uh, the wake? Uh, on yes, their behalf. possibly. We've done that as well on their behalf. So if somebody's very, very uh, struggling with the whole yes, situation, you, you are take it. You take the whole lot over. Take control of the whole, whole of the funeral for them. And I'm assuming you've got people that are involved in in buying the coffins because it's not just a, a a one individual type. It seems to me that there are lots of different. We types. actually do that. We actually do that as the funeral angel. We got a brochure here so they can choose whatever coffin they want, obviously. And then it's it's made to order as such, and we can get that uh, delivered here within 24 hours. And what would be the cheapest coffin? Cheapest coffin is £220. And the most expensive that you've most been Most expensive I've ever sold is £3,600. £3,600. an American metal casket. Wow. Yes, and it was pretty impressive. It's like putting someone to bed at night. It was very impressive. <laughs> is that the one with the uh, the, the, the double top? Yes. You see on the American movies? That's it, yeah. yeah. It's half open. Yeah, mm. yeah. And do you have people in marketing in this business? Um, our boss does all his marketing. You know, so, advertising. So what would he be doing? Dealing with local newspapers, newspapers social um, media and... Bereavement booklets yeah. uh, for the hospital. Um, we've had to sign up big billboard down in Enfield for quite a while now. So, yeah, it's what he deals with. So when you see a funeral um, cortege, which is the, mm. the line of uh, the, the hearse and then the, mm. the limousines, invariably black, after the case... What's the name of the individual who walks in front of the hearse to start with? Right, that's called the conductor. A lot of people seem to think that's the actual funeral director, which it can be in some cases if the funeral director actually works in the shop. But that's very rare nowadays, you tend to have funeral arrangers. But you have the funeral director, uh, conductor, um, and he's what, who we hand over the funeral to as the funeral leaves the parlour here. So, once he, so he's in charge he is, of, of the yeah. final journey, effectively. Yeah. And he will be the first one to get out of the, the hearse at the other end. Yeah. And he'll greet, greet um, the family at the house. Greet the family and make sure that whoever's involved in cremation mm. or the or the burial or whatever mm. the case may be, mm. uh, he looks after that side of things. Yeah. And the pallbearers, um, I've been to a few funerals where upon members of the family, male members of the family have helped, but you've invariably got some big hefty guys we have, who, um, who look like they know what they're doing. The hearse driver tends to be a bearer. Yes. The conductor's never a bearer. The hearse driver and the limb drivers are bearers. So if you have an instance where it's only a hearse on the funeral, then we will um, uh, 
all do bearers in, mm. basically. Mm. There tends to be a team that works really the whole area of them, possibly North London, that is available to most funeral directors, and then we, we basically put them to do our funerals for us. If the family are going to carry themselves, we always send the four bearers, because family members do, their grieving tend to drop out. But we always have the four there available. Have I missed anything out that happens in terms of job title in the funeral directors? We looked at accounts, we looked at marketing, we've looked at front well, of house, the arrangers. We've got the legality as well that we have to do cremation papers and the order doctor, doctor's papers for cremation. That's quite, um, and obviously advise people they've got to register the death. And when you do register the death, you get a green cremation or burial form. A body cannot be collected from um, a hospital or the coroners without this green form. Um, and that's quite distressing to some families because you can't register straight away. Um, and it could be two, three days before we can go and collect their loved one for them. So. Now, I'm doing a lot of work on the uh, the concept of how artificial intelligence is going to affect mm. careers and jobs mm. in society over the next sort of, five, 10, 15 years. And it strikes me that uh, the funeral business as such won't be affected in the same way that banking or financial services or some of the computing roles will. No, because it will always be people-based. This is about people, yes. Yeah. It's about care. Mm. It's about getting the body from the morgue or the hospital. Mm. It's about looking after the body. It's about presenting the body in the correct way and, and delivering the body and looking after everybody on the way to the, uh, yeah. and the you, final resting place. And you still got to do the paperwork. And the paperwork is still... Yeah, paperwork. Yeah. That's yeah. right, yes. You know, it'll never be computer-based because you have to sit there and ask legal questions to people. So... Would you want to do anything else? No. So this is it. For I really you. enjoy this job. I mean, I mean, I've had careers. This is uh, probably third career I've had. I'm yeah. Coming up to fifty, and um, no, I'm very contented here. <laughs> That's good. You know, and I can see myself going probably up to retirement in this job. Natalie, thank you very, very much. Really appreciate you talking to me today. So there we go. We've got a whole bunch of information about the different kinds of jobs that exist in a funeral directors. There's a lot more to it than you might think. So if you're interested, best advice is go into a funeral directors. Talk to them about the opportunities. And because of the stigma, you probably don't get a lot of youngsters come through the door, do you? No, not at all. So, yeah, I probably, would advise them to. Yeah, come and, see what's, job. come and see what it's all mm. about. That's great. Thank you very much. That's me, Graham Martin, the recruitment guy. We'll see you later. Bye for now. Can you say bye again? <laughs>